Hey everybody, welcome back to the City of Post. Today we're going to be looking at the European Championship 2019 information. So we just got a bunch of information about how the Dark Crystal Cup, which is like your last chance qualifier, will work. And we also have the format uh, for the actual European Championship. And we don't have this information for North America yet, but it's very interesting to look at because uh, like hopefully we can we can see what maybe we will get in North America, uh, but we'd also just uh, might see some stuff that maybe we can we'd like to see in the future uh, and it's just interesting to see kind of a new format come up um, so let's take a look if we scroll down the page here we'll see that the Dark Crystal Cup is happening right before the European Championships that's Friday October 4th uh, and it's going to be two deck constructed uh, Swiss, six Swiss rounds followed by a top 16 cut so two decks this has been done before at Euros, uh, but there's gonna be something a little different here that we'll talk about in a sec. So you're gonna register two valid deck lists and you will play the first list for your first three switch mass matches and then the next one for the other three matches. And then all of those matches are best of one. So you're not actually allowed to have the same card in either deck. So that's where the, the new kind of like difference comes up. Before you could split cards at like a two and a one ratio. So, you know, one deck could have um, a Yuri and then the other deck could have two Yuris. Or, you know, if it was a three deck format, all three decks could have a Shantoto. That's not allowed. You can, if you have Yuri in one deck, it can't be in any of your other decks, even if you only run one. So that's a pretty significant change and I like it a lot because it means that you're just going to see a bigger diversity of decks. You're not going to see people being able to play multiple wind decks, at least not easily, because they won't be able to split Ishtolas, they won't be able to split Diaboluses, uh, not that you would, you'd probably run three, but it's, it's going to make kind of like a wider... Uh, um, kind of area of, of, of play, like a lot more different types of decks, and I'm, I'm all for that. So if we look down here, we're looking at uh, 30 minutes per round, and then the top cut is 70 minutes, and that's all pretty, pretty standard. So if you uh, are playing in the uh, Dark Crystal Cup, I think it's something like uh, the top four uh, will make it to the next uh, day to the European Championships, um, but I don't see that written here. Now the European uh, Championship, it's going to be uh, two deck constructed, but it's six rounds of Swiss in best of three. Uh, so then you'd have to play, uh, you'd have to win a match by playing with both decks. So that's uh, a little different than the Dark Crystal Cup. Uh, so if you win with one of your decks, you're not allowed to use that same deck again because it, I mean, you wouldn't want to anyway. You have to win with that deck that you haven't won with. So if you win right away with your mono wind, uh, then you're going to have to play with your mono ice up to two times to try to win uh, to get through that round with a win. OK, uh, so then you can you'll get make a, um, a top cut and they'll do the same thing except the top cut is double elimination knockout which means you can lose a match and you can still be moving into the lower bracket of the tournament um, and there's still chances for you to finish quite highly um, now I'm, I'm very familiar with double knockout from uh, playing sports like that's a it's pretty common for tournaments to be that way but I don't think I've actually heard of that happening in a TCG although I am relatively new to TCGs uh, so it's kind of interesting I'm it's gonna be a lot of playing um, but I mean that's great for us watching the stream we're gonna be able to enjoy it quite a bit now one of my favorite parts about the European Championship is that we have these side events so during the Saturday there's gonna be two main side events in addition to plays on demand so the two side events are triathlon and breaking the rules uh, you might have heard of breaking the rules from the Winter Cup uh, and I believe it's been done in other places too uh, and then there's like play on demand where if you just sign up you you walk over with eight people you can sign up for constructed you can do a little uh, draft pool and that's pretty standard in most tournaments so for the triathlon you have to prove your skills in three different phases uh, you have to play title constructed and draft you'll play six rounds of Swiss three title 
three constructed, followed by top eight, which will be played in draft. Uh, so it looks pretty awesome. You have to uh, register your deck list for constructed and title, um, and then you would play draft in the final uh, in the top cut, and they're gonna do a 64 uh, player cut. I think this is awesome. I'm really excited uh, to see this event and hear about it. Um, obviously I'm not gonna be there, but uh, we'll probably hear all about it on Facebook. Uh, the second one is called Breaking the Rules. So in this format, uh, you have to adapt every single round. Every round they're gonna announce a rule that's valid for this round only. So backups produce two CP instead of one is the example that they give. And the tournament's gonna be pay played in six rounds of Swiss without a top cut. Uh, and that's also 64 players, $7 entry or seven pounds entry. Um, and you have to just hand in, you get to still get to craft your deck. So you don't really know what the broken rules are gonna be. So hopefully they apply. Uh, so you can take advantage of them uh, with the uh, with your deck. So uh, they also mentioned that the the new starter deck is going to have um, is going to be legal for this tournament, which is pretty cool. Um, so here's the day two for the European Championship. It shows the upper tree there, and if you um, make it to the lower tree, it seems like you can actually make your way all the way back up which is pretty insane i'm i'm used to lower uh trees making it so you can come in third at best um or lower but i've never heard of a, a tree that like brings you back into first place contention which is pretty crazy you should note that if you're in the lower tree you're playing more matches to get to the end it's going to be a real gauntlet um, and if we look at the lower tree, it also looks like it's going to have best of one until you get to these final brackets here before getting back to the upper tree. Um, so during the uh, Sunday, there's going to be even more side events, uh, including title, um, Kings and Queens and the Opus tournament. So in Kings and Queen constructed, you're going to sign up for the uh, most appropriate category for the two tournaments. Both of them will be played in six rounds of Swiss and top cut. Uh, and you will play in teams of two based on your position within the top eight. So both players who end up in the top eight for King and Queen Swiss will play together in the top cut as a team. Therefore, the top eight will be played best of three while Kings play against uh, Kings and Queens play against Queens. And if there's a draw, the two winners will play the deciding match. So who will be crowned our, as our FFTCG king and queen on Sunday? That's kind of cool. Like you're paired up with someone that did well on the first day, and then you're trying to get through the top cut together. Okay, so uh, title tournament's pretty self-explanatory, and then the Opus tournament. Which Opus is best? Build the deck using only cards from one Opus and play in the tournament. And there's up to six rounds of Swiss and no top cut. Never heard of this before. It sounds kind of like a pain to build the deck for this. Uh, but I mean, honestly, it's uh, it's looking really cool. Um, so the top three of this event are going to qualify for this year's World Championship in LA. And of course, that is going to be uh, paid flight and accommodation, I believe. Um, so what's significant about this Euros is that uh, there's just so much support. Both day one and day two have a ton of uh, side events, and that's really important. If you drop, uh, you can play in a side event. If you're, you know, knocked out for day two, you can play in side events. But if you came all the way from wherever to play in the Dark Crystal Cup, you really thought you had a chance, um, and you didn't quite make the Euros through the Dark Crystal, Crystal Cup, then guess what? You've got a full weekend of FFTCG ahead of you in all these amazing formats, and you know they're going to have great prizes. Uh, and I think that is such a good way to do this. Um, I'm really, really hoping that the North American Championships have some sort of similar format. Um, even if we don't see like two decks, even if it's uh, best of one Swiss and go to draft, um, I just hope that there's just a whole boatload of side events for us to do. Because if that's the case, then I would consider going to the Dark Crystal Cup and then just if I don't make it, then I'm going to play in side events the rest of the weekend. I think that would be a really fun time. But if it's just going to be you know, you show up on Friday, oh, you didn't qualify, and now you've got nothing to do, uh, then I probably wouldn't go to that event. 
all right so what do you guys think about these different um these different formats and what do you think about all these different side events that we haven't seen before and and some that we we haven't seen in north america yet uh let me know in the comments below and we'll see you next time and hopefully we can get some north america uh updates soon i'm sure we will the North American championships do happen a little bit later on uh, than the European championships, so we'll we'll hear soon. Okay, see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. You can like and subscribe to support us further, and you can read the Mesidia Post articles at themesidiapost.com. You can also check out our Patreon uh, if you want to support us more. And if you need FFTCG singles, then look no further than Cards of Evilise. They've got great deals and prices. Check them out. Finally, I'd like to thank FF Decks for creating the best website for creating your Final Fantasy trading card game decks. They've also got a Patreon, so make sure you go check them out. They work so hard for the community, so let's pay them back. See you next time.